Hello Swifter, this is Prof Chan. I hope you are ready to strut your stuff with structs. Structs will allow you to write more efficient, more maintainable, and even shorter code. In this video, we're going to learn how to declare structs, how to create structs with various properties, how to create structs with methods, how to work with arrays of structs, and how to think about struct scope. To paraphrase Bob Seger, we like to watch you struct. Let's get at it! Well, right now our app is keeping track of just the name of our to-do items, but we've designed this app to keep track of two more pieces of data per item, the date and the note as well. Well, one solution to this would be for us to add two more arrays in here, an array of date, and date actually is an apple type, and an array of strings, and those would have all the data for our scrolling table view, but if we wanted to pass individual items over to the to-do detail table view controller, we'd need to add two more variables to play catch with the arrays, a date and a note string. Now if we do this, we'd also have to update every single line where we refer to to do array, and if we add, delete, or move a value, we need to do the same thing to the to do date array and the to do notes array. So you see in prepare segue, we'd go from having one line in there dealing with the arrays to three lines. Our unwind function refers to the to do array in two lines, so for two other arrays, we'd now have six lines dealing with arrays in this function. In commit editing style, where we delete, we'd go from deleting an element in one array to deleting the same index value across three arrays. And move row at, where we move data in three lines, would now take us nine lines. Well, Swifters, there is a better way. Specifically, we're going to use a struct. Now, structs allow us to create complex data types where a single value can include multiple properties and even methods. So instead of having three separate variables or three separate arrays of variables, we're going to create a struct that has three different properties. And you've seen something similar to this before. When you create an IB outlet like my label here that's of type UI label, well, that UI label type has a bunch of different properties text, text color, text alignment. The one value my label can refer to all of those things through dot notation. It also has some methods that we've not used before. There's increase size and decrease size. Now UI label is actually a class instead of a struct. The concepts are very similar and we'll talk about the differences in a future video. But for now, why don't we open up a playground and you can type along with me and the examples that we'll type in will illustrate why structs are so useful and how you can use structs in your own code. So let's go into Xcode. I'm gonna start a new playground, a blank playground. I'll call it structs and I'll save it to the desktop. I'll expand the playground window, delete the str variable, and I'm gonna press shift command plus a few times just to make my font bigger so it's easier for you to see. So let's imagine you're the swift version of Nick Fury and you need to keep track of superheroes. You're uniting the DC universe and the Marvel universe. Now we wanna keep track of superhero name, alias, and age. So we'll declare three variables, hero name, a string, alias, a string, and age, an int and we can update or initialize these variables in the standard way. And we'll start off with Wonder Woman, so we'll set hero name equal to Wonder Woman, alias equal to Diana Prince, and age equal to 5000. She looks great for her age. And now let's create a function called tellAboutHero that has three parameters for the hero name, alias, and age. So that's func tellAboutHero open paren name colon string comma alias colon string comma age colon int close parentheses open curly, Xcode closes curly, and let's put a print statement inside those curlies. We'll say print, open paren, and in between the quotes, string interp name has the alias string interp alias and is string interp age years old. And we can call the function three times with three different heroes. So the first time we'll tell about hero passing in the three values we just initialized, hero name, alias, and age. Next line we'll tell about hero passing in name black widow, alias, Natasha Romanoff, age 36. And finally, tell about hero, Iron Man, Tony Stark, age 48. Now let's shift return to run, and the three function runs print out exactly as expected. Now I'll comment out these three function calls just so that I don't have too much stuff printing out below. Now we can also create three arrays for the, each of the three hero attributes, but we have to make sure that we keep the indexes in sync, because if one array has more values than another array, we could run into a fatal error index at a range. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll say var hero names equals uh, Wonder Woman, Black Widow, and Iron Man. I didn't need the explicit string array declaration, but I'll leave it in there. Next line, we'll declare an aliases array var aliases equals Diana Prince, Natasha Romanoff, and Tony Stark. And in the last one, we'll declare var ages equals 5,000, 36, and 48. And Black Widow is at index value one. So if we say tell about hero name, hero names one, Alias is one, age is one, shift enter, we get all the Black Widow info. 
And so now to show the bad things that can happen if our arrays get different index values, let's go ahead and print out these arrays. So this will be everything in sync first. So first we'll say for index in zero dot dot less than aliases dot count. And I could have used the count value for any of the three arrays because they're all the same. But to show the problems, I'm going to delete two values from hero names after we print these out. And in the curlies, we'll just say tell about hero and we'll pass in hero names index, aliases index, ages index. Got an error here, I didn't say names, hero names. Uh, and then shift enter, and we get the expected output on the three heroes. So no spoilers here, but let's say we bump off Iron Man and Black Widow. So we'll say hero names dot remove at two, hero names dot remove at one. And then I'll copy this for loop that worked above and I'll paste it below these two remove values, shift enter, and oh, we get fatal error index out of range. And I'll put that in as a comment, and I'll also comment this loop that was crashing so that it doesn't crash again. And I can run more code on my playground. And just to verify the problem, I'll say print hero names dot count, comma, aliases dot count, comma, ages dot count. We get one, three, three. And so this is a problem. We just learned to delete table view rows. And if we don't delete all of the arrays that are associated with that row, then we could get a fatal error index out of range. Now structs will come to the rescue because we can create one struct with three different properties and put that all in one array instead of having to keep track of three arrays. Let's do it. Let me just comment out the for loop up here so I can get rid of some of the print pollution that's down in the console. And so now let's create our struct, and our struct is going to be a complex type that in our case has three properties or attributes of a hero. To create a struct, we use the keyword struct, then we give it a struct name, and since this is a type, the practice is to use upper camel case, open and close curlies, and in the curlies we can declare our properties and any functions. Now I could initialize these values with default values, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to say var name colon string, var alias colon string, var age colon int. So now my struct hero has three different properties. And now I can declare variables as type hero, just like you would declare something as type int or type string or type UI label. Let's give that a try. So we'll say var lowercase hero equals uppercase hero and look at code completion. Uppercase hero has an S next to it to indicate that this is a struct. And then to initialize that struct with values, we do open parentheses, Xcode will give us the three input parameters and it wouldn't have done that if we set these variables equal to a default value. And when you press an open parenthesis after a struct name, you can consider this sort of like going to the struct factory and specifically going to the hero factory. We're gonna create a new value of type hero using the hero blueprint and we're gonna give it a name alias and int right from the start and that's going to go into lowercase hero now we can refer to any of these struct attributes via dot notation so if we say print who is string interpolation I'm going to type in hero dot and I get the choice of the three different attributes age alias and name Xcode knows about them they present these options they're listed with V's next to them because they're variables and they can be changed so by selecting name hero dot name goes in here that'll print Wonder Woman and let's add that string interpolation hero dot alias shift enter and we see who is Wonder Woman that's Diana Prince the struct allows us to use one variable and we just refer to two of the three properties think about how this makes functions more efficient instead of passing in three separate parameters for a function we can just pass in one struct value let's do that we'll create func hero info we'll pass in hero of type hero and inside the curlies we'll say print and in quotes String interpolation hero dot name has the alias string interpolation hero dot alias and is string interp hero age years old. Then let's call a function. So we'll start to type in hero in and we see that Xcode knows hero info exists. It knows it takes a parameter of struct type hero. We see an F next to it indicating it's a function. So we'll use this. We'll pass in the hero variable we defined above. We'll shift enter to run and we get Wonder Woman has the alias Diana Prince and is 5,000 years old. Our new function accepted one value instead of three. That value was a struct with three parameters. We used all three parameters in the struct. Nice. And I'll comment out these function calls to make sure that there's no print pollution down below. And now we'll see even better. We can make this function a method in the structure like this. And to show this, I'll copy the old struct and I'll paste it down below and I'll change hero to superhero upper camel case. So I've got a new struct that I'll make some room inside of superheroes curlies. I'm going to copy the function hero info and paste it inside the superhero curlies. And now in the way that I could access these three properties via dot notation, I can also access this method via dot notation. And to show you this is different from the previous function, I'll change the name from hero info to info. But look what else I can do. I don't need to pass in any parameters. And in fact, I don't need to refer to hero.name I can refer to just name alias and age because this method is inside of this struct it already knows it's part of hero 
So now let's create a new variable superhero equal to struct type superhero. We'll type open parenthesis to use the superhero struct blueprint in the struct factory. These are the three inputs that we need to create that superhero struct. This time let's pass in Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, age 36. And now we'll type in superhero, watch code completion, because we've got the value or variable as well as the struct, which is just the empty blueprint. We want the variable. And then press dot, and this variable superhero has three properties inside, age, alias, and name, plus a method, that function we put in, that's called info. So we'll say dot info. Functions always have parentheses, although this one has no input value, so Xcode adds empty parentheses. Shift enter, and we get Black Widow has the alias Natasha Romanoff, and is 36 years old. Perfect! And now here's what directly relates to our apps. You can also create an array of structs so that all the properties are synced in a single array instead of spread across three different arrays. So first let's declare and initialize an empty array of superhero structs. So we'll say var superheroes colon and in brackets superhero, which is our struct type, equals open and close brackets. Now let's add some elements to this array. So we'll say superheroes dot append open parentheses, and then we need to pass in an element. So we'll say capital superhero, open parens to go to the struct factory, and we'll pass in Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, and 5000. And of course, you can also create a new variable like this. So I'll say var new hero equals superhero, open parens, Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, 48. And then I can append new hero into superheroes. And I'll copy Wonder Woman's append line, paste it in down here, change the name to Iron Man, Tony Stark, 48. Oh, it looks like I set Black Widow to 48. She's supposed to be 36. Sorry about that, Natasha. And now we can go through all the values and superheroes in lots of different ways. So why don't we do for index in zero dot dot less than superheroes dot count. And in the curlies, we'll just say superheroes index. And if we say dot info, that will execute the info method for every single element as we go through the array. Shift enter, we get the three results we're looking for. I have the extra Black Widow line up front because I forgot to comment out that earlier singular call. You can comment that out, run again, and yep, we get all three values we'd expect as we go through all the indices in the array. Now let's copy and paste this for loop to make sure that we understand how to get to individual property values at an array index. So we'll change the inside here to who is string interpolation, oh that string interpolation, and inside the string interps we'll get the individual properties this way. Superheroes bracket index, close bracket, and then it's dot alias, oh that superhero bracket index bracket dot name. So after the bracket indicating the element in the array, we want to do dot notation to access the individual property. I'll comment out the for loop above so those don't print out. Do shift enter and we get our values exactly as expected. Who is Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, Tony Stark. Oh, that's Iron Man. And instead of using index values, we can also iterate through an array. So we'll comment out the for loop above. Then we can just say for superhero in superheroes. And in between the curly, say superhero dot info, open and close parens, shift return to run, output as expected. Perfect. Let's option click on superheroes in the for loop. It says it's an array of struct type superhero. Option click on superhero in the for loop and it says that that creates a constant of type superhero. You can option click on info, it says it's a func, but we wrote this func so there's no description. And so for more value on structs, let's see what would happen if we removed element two and one like we did before when we had three arrays, but this time we operate on just one array and we won't get index out of range. So we'll say superheroes dot remove at two, superheroes dot remove at one. I'll copy and paste the for loop below so we can see the output before and after the removes. Shift return to run, we see all three elements print out from the first loop, then we removed two elements, then the second loop produces just the Wonder Woman element. And just to double check, we can highlight that first for loop, comment it out, rerun, and we just see the Wonder Woman line. Print superheroes.count, yep, only one element. So now that we know how to create a struct, use an array of struct, and refer to individual properties inside the array of struct, let's use our new knowledge in the to-do list app. Now if we take a look at main storyboard over here on our to-do detail table view controller, we see we're keeping track of three things in a to-do item. We've got a name, we've got a date, and we've got notes. So those should be the three properties of this new to-do item struct we're going to create. We're going to first create it in class, and I'm going to show you some issues around struct scope, and I'll show you a new concept of how we can create a struct that we can access throughout the project. But first, in the to-do list view controller, I'm going to add my struct just under the class declaration. Want to give yourself a quick challenge? Why don't you see if you can declare a new struct right here called to do item that has three properties, name, date, and notes. And as a hint, declare the date property as a date type. Even though we've never done this before, date is a valid type just like string. So pause and resume. Let's see if you got it. 
So we declare our struct by saying lowercase struct space capital to do item and open and close the curlies. So you can think of to do item in upper camel case as the blueprint, the struct name, and inside we'll have in lower camel case the three properties that are part of this blueprint. Var name declared as a string, var date declared as a date, and var notes declared as a string. We're declaring them, but we're not initializing. And now we need to declare a variable to hold an array of the new struct. So we're going to get rid of the old variable that we had called to do array, and we'll get rid of the dummy values too. We'll start out with nothing. We'll say var to do items colon. We've got to declare the array. So we'll say bracket and then in capitals to do item because that's the type. And then we'll say equals open and close bracket so that it's empty right from the start. Now we'll have to take the time to enter new data here. We'll learn how to save data during the next video. And so now we've got some updates to do. Every place where we refer to to do array, we want to refer to to do items. But we're going to run into an error right away in our prepare for segue function. Previously we sent a string over to the destination. That was an element of to do array. Now we want to send over a to do item, our new struct, which is going to be an element of the array to do items. Now we're getting an error here because we're trying to assign an element of to do items, which is a to do item, to destination to do item, which is still a string. Let's go over to the destination, which is to do detail table view controller, and update our catch value. Now we want to take to do item and change it from being a string to a capital to do item to our struct. But when we start to type in to do item, the struct in here, it doesn't show up in code completion. Now why do you think that is? Well, it has to do with the scope of the to do item struct. Let's see where we declare that. If we go back into to do list view controller, we can see that the struct was declared inside of this class. Now that means that the struct is available for this whole class to do list view controller, but it's not available outside of it. So we're going to highlight struct and cut it out here and then put it outside of the class. And once it's outside of the class, it has project wide scope. Now we could paste it just above the class definition, but that's really bad programming practice. Instead, we're going to create a separate file for this struct. And that's good programming practice because anybody taking a look at your code can immediately see by looking in the files in the project navigator, ah, there's a special struct and it's available to all of my classes throughout the project. I can create the struct file to be anywhere, but I'm going to put it above the two view controllers. So I'm going to click on scene delegate.swift. When I create the file, it'll be right underneath it. Then I'll say file, new, file. And I'm not going to select Cocoa Touch class because we're not subclassing one of Apple's blueprints. We're creating our own type as a struct. So we'll click on Swift file. This will give us a blank file. Click on next, give the file a name. I'm going to call this capital to do item, all one word. Click on create. Xcode will put the file exactly where it needs to. And I see this blank file. And I can see over on the left hand side in my project navigator, I've got a to do.swift file. Now, right underneath my import statement, I'm going to paste in the struct. Now, to do item is available as a struct throughout my project. Now let's go back to to do detail table view controller. And now we can define to do item as our struct to do item. As you type it in, Xcode recognizes it. By the way, if it seems that Xcode isn't recognizing this, just do a shift command K and that forces what's called a clean in your project. And that updates everything that Xcode knows about the different variables, structures, data structures, and other things inside the project. So again, adding a separate struct outside of any of the classes gives this struct project wide scope. And it's good practice to put it in its own file. Now we need to change how we use to do item because it's no longer just a string. So here, if we get a to do item that's nil, we want to set to do item equal to, and we'll say capital to do item, open parentheses here, and we'll pass in blank values. Empty string for name, empty string for notes, and by saying capital date open and close parentheses, that'll give it the current date and time. Then we need to update name.txt, not with to do item, which was the string, but to do item dot name, which gives us access to the specific name property of the to do item. Next, we'll put a value in the date picker. We've already got an IB outlet for the date picker, but we'll type in date picker dot and look at the date property here. The date property is an attribute that holds a date in any date picker, and it's of type date. So we'll set that equal to to do item dot date, and then we'll set note view dot text equal to to do item dot notes. Now in a prepare for segue function, it would be totally fine to write three separate lines, one parameter on each line, to do item dot name, to do item dot date, to do item dot notes. But why don't we say to do item, the entire struct equals, and we'll say capital to do item, open parentheses, and we'll pass in three parameters, name field dot text, date picker dot date, and note view dot text. Now I'm getting an error in here. I have to force unwrap name field dot text. So I'll click fix for that. Otherwise we're looking good. So we can go back and update to do list view controller dot swift. And now let's take a look at the types inside of prepare for segue. Option click on to do items. We see that that's an array of to do item. And option click on the destination dot to do item. And we see that's a to do item as well. So now we're taking the array element at selected index path dot row. And it's the same type as to do item. This is going to work great. And remember what we would have had to do if we had three separate arrays, we'd have three separate lines. We've boiled this back down to just one line using a struct. 
Now let's head down to the unwind function. Xcode highlights every line that needs attention. So we're gonna change all of the lines that mention to do array. And we've got three places where we need to change this to to do items. One's in the true condition of the if statement when we pass a value back that's been edited. And we'll do it when we generate a new index path and when we do our append. So now let's scroll down to the section and number of row and sections needs to return to do items. Cell for row at is when we update the text label dot text so that it shows up in the table view cell. So we're gonna need to say to do items bracket index path dot row. And then we need to say dot name to make sure that we get the string out there for the name to put inside a text label dot text. And in commit editing style, we're gonna replace to do array with to do items. And in move for row at, there are three places where we swap out to do array for to do items. One, two, three. So your project should now have a spectacular struct and a spectacular array of structs. Let's go ahead and build and run. I'm gonna do this on an iPhone 11 Pro. Now our struct array is initially empty, but we'll click on plus. Why don't we type in the to-do item as learn Swift. Look at the date. It's updated with the current date for this iPhone. Down the notes, we'll say it's Swift time. Click on save. Element added. It should be a struct with three properties. Click on it again. Yes, all three properties that we just added reload as part of passing over that struct to the struct catch value. Let's add a new record, build apps. Let's do that on Thursday, February 20th at 8 a.m. In the notes, I've got an awesome idea. Save this. Plus to add another note, change the world. Do that on Thursday, February 6th, 3 p.m. Be the change and save. You can add more records in here. Take a vacation. I hear Dublin is nice. Stay at the Clarence Hotel. It's owned by the band members and you too. And we can go back and we can see items. We can move items, check to see that we move them properly, and delete an item. Everything's working great. And it's challenge time. Let's modify that EU challenge project from our earlier videos. Create a structure called nation that has three properties, country, capital, and uses euro, which are string, string, and bool. Create an array of nation structs and name it nations. In detail table view controller, create a single instance of the struct and call it nation. Revisit the data at this bit.ly and create two more arrays with the data included named capitals and uses euro. And then modify view did load so that the three arrays, members, capitals, and uses euro are read into the array of structures called nations. Update the entire app so that it works with the nation's data. And bonus, see if you can add a switch of type UI switch to detail table view controller so that it looks like the one at the right and figure out how to get it to work with the uses euro property of nation. Now in this demo on the right, you'll notice that I've got two fields in each cell. And if you want an extra challenge, there's a cell attribute called style. You can set it to subtitle and that will give you a detail text label that you can use in your code. But if not, don't worry, we'll cover it in a second. Swift, are you ready for it? Pause, travel through awesomeness and resume. Let's see how you did. And here I am back in the EU app. I'm gonna click on scene delegate.swift because I wanna put my struct right underneath it. I'm gonna say file, new, file, new Swift file. Next, name this nation with a capital letter because a struct is a type, create. In this file, we'll say struct, capital nation, and the curlies. And in the curlies, we'll declare our three properties, var country string, var capital string, var uses euro bool. Now in viewcontroller.swift, let's set up our array nations. So we'll say var nations, and we'll set this up as an array of nation structs that is a blank array. Now over in detail, table view controller dot swift, we will change member to nation and change its type to capital nation. We're gonna check to see if not member is nil, but if nation equals nil, then if nation is nil, we're not passing in a variable, we're creating a new nation. Then we'll set nation to a new nation struct, capital nation, open parentheses, go to the struct factory and we'll pass in empty string country, empty string capital, and how about false for use as euro? Country field dot text should now be equal to nation dot country. Capital field dot text should equal nation dot capital. And in prepare for segue, we're now gonna pass back a nation and we'll set that equal to capital nation open parens and we'll set the parameters to country field dot text, capital field dot text. And for uses euro for now, let's just put in true. We'll eventually update that with a switch. Now back in viewcontroller.swift, we've got one array with all of our member nations in here. Let's create two blank arrays for capitals and for use as euro. Now in a browser, if you head back over to bit.ly slash euro dash swift, we can highlight all of the capitals, copy them, head back into Xcode, paste those all inside of the capitals array. You can have Xcode fix the indentation with a command A control I and I'll fix this closing bracket. Now we'll do the exact same thing, setting up the uses euro array, grabbing the data from our Google doc, pasting it into our code, command A control I for formatting, fix that closing bracket. Now the reason we added these three arrays in here was so that we could take the three arrays and put them all in one struct. 
Now in a future video, we'll save the data in the struct and we'll be able to get rid of this hard-coded data, but we want some data in there for now. So in view did load, let's load up the struct. We'll say for index in zero dot dot less than, all three arrays have the same element count so we can use any of them. I'm gonna say members dot count, open and close curlies. We'll say nations dot append, and what do we want to append? Well, let's create a separate value in here, new nation. We'll say that equals capital nation, open parentheses, go to the struct factory, and country will be members index, capital will be capitals index, and uses euro will be uses euro index. Now let's take this new nation value and pass it in as our append. This actually doesn't need to be a variable. We can change it to a constant. And we can scroll down and update the functions and prepare for segue. We're going to destination.nation and we're going to pass over nations at selected index path.row. Down here in unwind, we want to make sure that we update from source.nation. That's in this first if clause and that should update nations at selected index path.row. Then in the clause below that, we're passing source.nation in as the append value for nations.append. Number of rows in section needs to return nations.count. In cell for row at, we're going to update cell.textlabel.text equal to nations in brackets index path.row. And we need to say dot country because we want to display the country property. And we'll swap out this old members array for the new nations array in commit editing style and three times in move row at. Now just to double check, I should only refer to members three times in my code when I define members and inside the for loop. So I'm going to do command F, type in members into the find field and press enter. Xcode highlights members in the for loop. I want it there. I'll press enter again. Xcode finds it in unwind for detail. Ah, I forgot to update it in this second clause here. I also refer to members in these two print statements, but I don't need these anymore, so I'm going to delete them both. And if I press enter a couple more times, I see members is just showing up up top where I need it. Great. And now we just have a little bit more interface work between detail table view controller and main storyboard. So I'll get into assistant mode with those two files. And I have an empty circle next to capital field. So I'm just gonna click inside that empty circle, drag over into capital field. I'll set up the connection and the circle gets filled in. Now I'll click on library, look for switch. Here's the description of the switch. It says it displays an element that shows the user the Boolean state of a given value. By tapping on the control, the state can be toggled. That's what we want. Click and drag this guy over and let's plop it over to the right of this third section cell. I'll add a label to the left of that. So I'll click on the library, find label, drag it over to the left and change the text to read uses euro. Then I'll control drag from the switch, create an IB outlet, name this euro switch. It's a UI switch connect. I'm going to close main storyboard in detail table view controller dot swift. I'm going to find the prepare for segue. And when creating the new nation and we passed uses euro in as true, we're now going to pass uses euro in as euro switch dot is on. Look at the is on value here. It says it's a Boolean that determines the off on state of the switch. That's what we want. Press return. Now in view did load. When we load in this view controller, let's make sure we update Euro switch. So we'll say under country field and capital field, Euro switch dot is on equals nation dot uses Euro. Let's have an even more bonusy bonus. In the table view, let's go ahead and add both the country name and the capital. So click on main storyboard. Let's zoom in on our table list view controller. Click on the cell. The attribute inspector shows a style attribute. There are a bunch of different choices. Let's take a look at them. Basic is pretty much what we were looking at. Just one field in here. There's right detail. There's left detail. There's subtitle. Choose subtitle and we can add our capital just below the country name. Where do we update this? Well, it's inside viewcontroller.swift. Remember cell for row at? That's where we add our country. Well, we can say cell dot and then the way there's a text label. Look, we've got another label in here. It's called detail text label. Code completion description says it's the secondary label of a table cell if one exists. It does exist. That's the label just underneath the text label in subtitle style. Press return. Then say question mark dot text. If you forgot the question mark, Xcode would remind you equals. And why don't we put the word capital colon before the capital name? So we'll say in double quotes, capital colon, then string interpolation, nations index path dot row dot capital. Take a good look at that. Make sure you got it in there. Build and run and let's see if we've got some Euro structs. And ho ho, say magnifique, we've got all of our countries and we have the capitals listed underneath them. Click UK, it passes in all the properties of the struct. Could we change uses zero? We could, but we won't. Instead, we'll return to table view and do a Brexit swipe and delete UK. Click edit, move Bulgaria to the top. Click done. 
Bulgaria's economy improves. They want to use the euro? Click uses euro is true. Everything's looking good, but we forgot to set auto resizing on the switch, so let's go do that. Return to main storyboard. Click the switch. Click the size inspector. Set auto resizing not so that it's anchored to the left, but so that it's anchored to the right. How do you look on a bigger iPhone? Spectacular. Let's build and run again. Swifter, this looks magnificent. You learned about structs. You learned about working with arrays of structs. You updated not one, but two apps with arrays of custom structs. Hope you're feeling those Swift superpowers. They are structurally sound. Keep at it, Swifter.